please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to Halftime Report. I'm Samira Abdi and with me is my colleague Nigel D'Souza. Hi Nigel, it's a Friday and it looks like we're wrapping it up in style. So we touched a high of about, what, 10,474 on the Nifty. We've come off just a tad actually uh, from the high point. But uh, nevertheless, the going looks good, uh, not just on the frontline space, but, uh, you know, even in the mid-cap index, that index is now up about 240 odd points of Friday is uh, shaping up well, as is the start of a new series. Absolutely, uh, Sumera. I think uh, not the best day to wear red. Uh, you know, it's been green on the screen. You would have got the color right uh, all of last month. But uh, important details coming in on JP Infra. The resolution professionals currently, they're reviewing bids for JP Infra. Remember, the full group has been on fire. So we'll try to get, you know, who's exactly breaking this exclusive. The COC meeting on Monday, the bids for JP Infra to be reviewed on Monday itself. So we'll try to uprise you on this. JP Associates, uh, I just checked a short while back, that was up roughly around 9% or thereabouts. JP Infra has been locked in upper circuits. So come Monday, in fact, those bids will be uh, you know, reviewed. Uh, the 10 bidders have evaluated JP Infra. Some bids are for individual assets as well. So we'll keep an eye out on that. JPM, KPMG, in fact, is doing the financial evaluation. Then in the last one hour, well, the Nifty has moved to the high point of the day, but the IT space should come up for you. Let's get the index. It's come off a tad bit from the high point of the day. This after uh, Trump's administration, they have made H-1B visa approval a tad bit tougher. This is likely to have some kind of an impact on IT stocks. So let's get in some uh, opinion then. Let's pull up some of these stocks first. Uh, the IT index, I think, had come off the high point of the day. It's got some of its losses. Now TCS and all had taken a bit of a knock. So it did take a bit of a knock, but now it's seen a bit of a re revival. To understand what's going on there and will it materially impact uh, these companies, Sandeep Agarwal of Edelweiss Financial Services joins us. Hi, Sandeep. Thanks so much for joining in. Sandeep, first things first, you know, the stocks initially, they took a bit of a knock on the back of these reports. And after that, we have seen a bit of a recovery. Is this news piece new, first of all? And according to you, what kind of impact can it have on these companies? See, in my view, when uh, most of the large IT companies, they send people on, on site, they definitely have the uh, targeted client to which they are sending and for that purpose only they send. Now, uh, what the news article basically mentions is that, you know, if someone has left in between or you, he's out or he's on the bench and all those things, then, you know, the law becomes tough. But my sense is that what is that percentage means if you see... Sandeep, I'd, Sandeep yeah. I just wanted to ask you, uh, was the street expecting this to come about, you know, because all these stocks have recovered from the low, low point of the day. So first, was this on expected lines? Were, were analysts like you expecting this to happen? No, no. So there was no such expectation, okay. honestly. All right. but, but I think there is no impact because, see, the rule only talks about some... 2-3% people in my view who basically, okay. you know, goes through this. So how will that impact? I don't see there is any impact of this move. These are just another rhetoric, I would say. It's because what will the impact? Not more than 2% people go through that phase where, you know, in between the project gets over or for some reason he yeah. has to shift. Okay. So for that reason, I don't think there should be so much of negative. It is okay. a normal business. So I don't see at all this thing has any, having any material impact on the sector. All right, uh, Sandeep, stay on with us. Apurva Prasad of HDFC Securities also joins in. Uh, hi, Apurva. Uh, you agree with Sandeep that uh, the percentage of people uh, uh, employed on site is very little and therefore the impact of uh, tougher H-1B norms, uh, such as the ones released, uh, would be negated to quite, an uh, 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 to quite a bit? Yes, so, I mean, I agree uh, uh, to what Sandeep was saying. So, uh, I think it will be a relatively small number that is one part of it. Now, the second part of it is that the dependence on H-1B as it is is also reducing. Hmm. So if you look at the number of filings as it is within the last two to three years, it's come down significantly. It's probably down 50-60% from what the application was two to three years back. So even as a denominator, that number is coming down. And, and even within that, uh, like Sandeep was mentioning, I think it will be a very small uh, amount. So I don't think it's something which should really be a concern. Okay, so we'll brush it aside then. Uh, uh, Apurva, if you could uh, fill us in with what are your, uh, you know, picks, top picks in the ID space and um, if in fact uh, you, you've changed your view in the recent past. 
Yes, so we have a buy. Uh, we have recently upgraded Infosys. We have a buy on Infosys, and we are positive on HCL Tech and Tech Mahindra. That's from the large cap ID space. Mid cap ID, we continue to be positive. We've been positive for quite some time. Okay. Uh, we think there is still further scope for valuation re rating. Hmm. Uh, Sandeep, just one last word from you. Given the uh, NASCOM's uh, outlook now for FY19, uh, things appear to be picking up. In that scenario, uh, what are your top bets going ahead? It's uh, like Apurva, my top bets are same, Infosys, HCL and Take Mahindra in the large cap space. Mm. And in the mid cap space, we like L&T, Infotech, L&T Technology Services, Persistent System. Uh, and one more point I would like to add is that uh, all the indicators, lead indicators clearly are saying that, you know, the worst of the growth is definitely behind for the sector. Yeah. That is only one line I would like to add. <laughs> All right, uh, Sandeep Apurva, thanks very much, gentlemen, uh, for your quick take on this. So um, H-1B visa norms being made tougher, but a final reading uh, of uh, uh, the rules actually suggests that uh, the percentage of people which would be impacted by this is uh, quite minuscule and therefore the impact on uh, the ID companies themselves appears limited. Nifty is holding with good gains, pretty good going, 80 points higher uh, on the Nifty. Keep an eye out on that front and the breadth of the market as well. Good. After a while, we have 1,600 stocks that are advancing in comparison to less than 400 stocks that are declining. But uh, let's get chatting with... Uh, 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 all right, I think... Um, we, we don't have a management there. We'll try to get in touch uh, with, uh, you know, management that uh, will join us very, very shortly. But for the time being, just keep an eye out on the markets. You know, we have uh, a couple of these stocks that are doing well from the broader markets. Force Motors. Remember, that used to be a bit of a darling. It went all the way to around 4,000 rupees. And from the top, it did see a bit of a knock. Now it's up close to around 5.5%. So Force Motors should come up for you on the screen. But I think we have Mr. Nitin Kara, the MD of Confidence Petroleum, who joins us on the phone line. Hi, Mr. Kara. Thanks so much, sir, for joining in. I was just looking at your shareholding pattern, sir. In the last uh, few quarters, you've been creeping and you've been buying this uh, stake from the open market. If you could give us a sense, what would your stake uh, likely settle at? Uh, what would be the level you'd be happy with? Uh, and will you buy more uh, in the next couple of months, given that it'll be the end of the fiscal? Yeah, definitely. You see, we have uh, bought almost around... Uh, 9% in uh, this uh, year and last means 17-18 in last in this year and com definitely companies doing good so we want to increase our uh, shareholding pattern and uh, in over future also yeah. we are looking for the same in future also uh, same Hello, sir. Just uh, could you reiterate what you're trying to talk about? We are we as per what re details we have your shareholding was at around 57, 53.7% as of December yeah, 2017. Right. So 9% right. you're talking about you're buying, you have bought in the last two fiscals. That would be 17, uh, FY17 and FY18 as well put together. Yeah, early, earlier I thought uh, it, it was around uh, 46 point something. Okay. Yeah. All, all, all right. And the reason you're doing this is because you're confident on your business. I think in the first yeah. nine months, you've done a 24% growth with margins of around 12%. Give us a sense yeah. about FY19. What kind of revenue number can you do? And uh, what kind of margins? Can you hold on to these 12% margins? FY19? Yeah. Yeah. See, uh, as, as you are aware that we have already in the four wings of business. Means one is the LPG cylinder manufacturing. That is uh, um, our prime business. Then mm -hmm. second is the LPG bottling. And third one is the auto LPG dispensing station. Means we are putting auto LPG dispensing across the country. Right. We have already put 124 auto LPG st stations. That's we are the largest auto LPG stations uh, marketing company. Okay. In, yeah. At present, privately. And then, uh, as Ujwala, this government has announced this Pradhan Mantri Ujwala team that uh, in last fiscal budget, uh, uh, our fi uh, finance minister announced hmm. that eight crore uh, LPG. Right. You know, Mr. Kara, Mr. Kara, yeah. sir, if we just want to know, sir, we, we're aware that you're doing various expansions uh, and that's likely to come on stream. For that, sir, you have done 420 crores of a revenue in the first nine months. You have another right, right. one quarter to go. But for FY19, can you go at this kind of a run rate? You're doing roughly around 140 crores every quarter. So if we annualize yeah. that number, then you should be doing right. roughly around 550 to around 600 crores. Is that gettable? Right. And for next year? What kind of revenue can you look at and margins? What kind of margins are we looking at? We are expecting almost around 30 to 40 percent growth in our uh, current fiscal what we are going on okay. at present. And next because, fiscal? Uh, 
yeah next year also uh, we are expecting around 50% growth because our uh, whatever stations we have now 124 mm. it will become uh, uh, we have already signed mou for another uh, 20 okay. uh, 75 stations right. so in this fiscal by march we will achieve around 135 to 40, 140 stations and another in another means by march 19 we will mm. touch around 200 to 225 okay. stations all right uh, mr khara uh, go ahead sir yeah and as you aware this uh, pradhan mantri ujwala so we have book order for cylinders also for another two years and uh, in uh, as well as we'll get the same uh, growth in our bottling division also so all, all right. the divisions are doing good definitely great good to know sir thanks very much uh, for your time this afternoon and let's uh, straight away shift focus to a cnbc tv 18 exclusive we've been on top of the jp infra asset sale uh, story and more details are coming in just now uh, cnbc tv 18 in fact uh, has access some more details on this uh, we learned that 10 bidders are now being evaluated for jp infra manisha natarajan has more details on that manisha hi go ahead Hi, yes, uh, you know, as reported earlier that there are only five, that's incorrect, there are 10 bidders which are being evaluated. KPMG is doing the financial evaluations while the resolution professionals are looking at all the legal terms and of the bids. What we do understand is that uh, some of the bids have come for part assets and not for full assets. And on Monday, when the COC meeting happens and all these bids are opened up, uh, the negotiations will begin, which means that uh, the bankers and the IRP professional will work towards asking those uh, corporates who have bid for all assets to up their bids if the individual asset bids are higher. So for just to give you a short example, let's say uh, just the uh, JP Expressway has been uh, evaluated as or bid for at a higher amount uh, than a consolidated bid, then the negotiations will happen for the consolidated bidder to actually uh, pump up his uh, bid. So that's what we hear. On the other side, there is also another interesting development which is happening. Uh, JP Infratech has started sending letters cancelling units of home buyers who have not paid three EMIs. Now, this, is, uh, this has got the home buyers also extremely upset. They've been waiting for a resolution since October. Uh, there was supposed to be a court hearing today at the Supreme Court uh, for JP Associates to submit more money that has again been cancelled. To just put in perspective, three hearings have been cancelled in the court this month alone and the next hearing is 9th March. So an early resolution is something that everybody is waiting for and will have to be achieved. Uh, Monday meeting will be crucial to see what numbers are coming up. Right now to say that look, only five bids are being considered is not correct. Actually, all 10 bids will be looked at whether it's the whole or sum of parts, which adds up to a higher amount. Uh, Manisha, just one clarification. We understand that from some of these bids are only for select assets and some for the entire company. Uh, would you know more about that? Yes, that's true. Some of the bids are for all the assets and some of the bids are for individual assets. Uh, though the figures right now are not known, they're still being evaluated. Uh, we are at the top of the story. By evening, maybe we should be able to get some more information in terms of what is what are the consolidated numbers and mm. what are the individual asset numbers which uh, have been bid by the bidders. Okay, all right. Thanks so much, uh, Manisha, for joining in and giving us all those details. But the other big uh, stock that's been moving around in the last month or the last few months has been Fortis Healthcare. Now, uh, as the promoters, they have kept losing out uh, their shareholding as lenders have invoked pledge shares in the company. We understand that the competition is just hotting up. Nisha Podar, she's bringing us the exclusive details on what's going on on Fortis Healthcare. Nisha, over to you. Thanks so much, Nigel, for that. And of course, what has really given that additional competition to this whole race for Fortis Healthcare is the re-entry of Malaysia-based global giant IHH, which has deep pockets. Now, it has looked at Fortis Healthcare in the past, but developed a cold feed because of the legal tangle that Fortis Healthcare had with Daichi, brother, uh, Daichi Company. Now, with that now gone, with uh, Fortis promoters Malvinder and Shivinder Singh really resigning from the board, 
and disentangling Fortis Healthcare from the Daichi situation. And also remember, uh, with the new developments that are happening in terms of even the valuation of the company coming down from what it was a year back, now IHH has really made a re-entry in this particular deal. While I still maintain that what is really in advanced talks at this point to sell, uh, to really buy out uh, Fortis Healthcare is the Manipal transaction. Manipal backed by TPG, which is looking to infuse about 5,000 odd crore rupees in a reverse merger along with primary equity infusion of funds uh, could be the one which could really clinch the deal if IHH does not up the game. And here remember that another twist in the tail has been in the dynamic changing world of Fortis Healthcare is that uh, the, the, the lenders have invoked the pledge share. So they are also going to have a big say in the sale of Fortis Healthcare. And there again, if IHH gives a better pay than Manipal and TPG combined, then IHH could have a better play. So it really depends now who pays more for Fortis. But just one caveat over here that SEBI has initiated a probe on the divergence of fund uh, claim uh, in Fortis Healthcare. And if that really puts a spanner in the works for the deal, that could be a dampener. But besides that, the race is really hotting up for buying out Fortis Healthcare. Okay, Anisha, we'll keep an eye out on Fortis Healthcare. Okay, remember, you know, the exchange as well has come out of the notice. Fortis Healthcare has to declare their numbers on the 28th of February. If they don't do that, then in fact, all the derivative contracts will expire at the end of uh, March. So keep an eye out on that front as well. If they come out with their numbers, then they're likely to stay in uh, the FNOA as well. But uh, not just for Fortis Healthcare, you should also keep an eye out on another company, Fortis Malar Hospitals. Now that in fact is uh, a BSC listed company. So I think we should get that stock as well up for you. I remember at one point of time, Fortis Malar hospitals, that stock had gone all the way to around 90 rupees. Why is that? Because in fact, uh, you know, Fortis Healthcare owns roughly around 100% stake in Fortis Hospitals. Fortis Hospitals has nearly around 62.9% stake in Fortis Malhar. So that stock, in fact, today it's uh, buzzing around. The volumes are not very, very high on that front. But the stock is corrected from around 90 rupees. Remember, in the past, there have been reports, and even the company had confirmed that they're looking at, you know, demerging the SRL part of Fortis Healthcare and then merging it with this. As of now, once this entire trouble started for Fortis Healthcare, then all of them went out of the window. But if Fortis Healthcare is going to get a new promoter, then what happens to this company? Because indirectly, Fortis Healthcare owns this company as well. So keep an eye out on that one as well. Besides tracking Fortis Healthcare, you can keep an eye out on this smaller company, 100, 120 crore company, Fortis Malar Hospitals. Okay, uh, so thanks for that. Uh, some news flow coming through on PNB. Uh, we are understanding from agencies that PNB may be asked to pay for the liability, although another line said uh, that government may ask PNB and their peers to actually uh, determine the fraud liability, and then PNB may have uh, to pay for that. So now that stock, in fact, uh, taking a hit at the low point of the day, down over a percent. But uh, let's uh, uh, keep it with that story. After seizing jewelry and precious stones worth over 5,000 crores from Mehul Chok, and the Nirav Modi group of companies. Sources now tell us that the Enforcement Directorate has lined up more assets to be attached. Utkarsh Chaturvedi uh, has more on this. Utkarsh, go ahead. So, what we are picking up is uh, that after all the seizures of precious stones, gems, and jewelries, uh, now what uh, ED is looking at is all the properties uh, which Nirav Modi and Mehul Choksi have. And we have the list of uh, the major properties which they are eyeing. So, there are six flats in Samudra Vahemahel in Varli in Mumbai which belong to Nirav Modi. And that is something which uh, has been identified by the Enforcement Directorate. Uh, you have one flat in Rossner House in Mumbai uh, of uh, uh, <coughs> Mehul Choksi. That is something which is under the radar. Also, one SEZ of Mehul Choksi in Jaipur. Remember, there was one SEZ yesterday which has been uh, attached by Income Tax Department, but there's one more SEZ in Jaipur of Mehul Choksi, uh, which is under the scan of Enforcement Directorate, and they have identified that. Also, the BKC office of Mehul, Mehul Choksi, uh, that uh, has been identified, and one property of Mehul Choksi in Pune, Harapsal. Now, apart from that, what we are picking up is that they have uh, further properties in cities like Surat and Nashik, which have been identified by Enforcement Directorate. We can really see the seizure happening uh, from today and you know it, it can go for the next two days. Remember that from the day the FIR has been filed, Enforcement Directorate has been going on and doing searches and raids and seizures every day. Uh, remember what Enforcement Directorate sources told us earlier was that they will keep doing the raids, keep doing the searches and keep doing the seizures till the time they do not reach the full amount which is somewhere around 11,000 crores. Uh, what ED is expecting from this property is a good 
good amount of two to three thousand crores. Now this is what we have been told because if, if you look at these SCs, that and even these flats, they are very, they are very expensive flats. So basically, this is the whole modus operandi at this point of time when it comes to enforcement directorate uh, uh, around properties worth uh, three to four thousand crores is what ED is looking at to attach. In uh, this whole process, we can see the seizures happening from today or tomorrow. Okay, all right. Thanks so much, Utkarsh, for joining in and giving us those details. But PNB, that's the stock I think you should really focus on. It's taken a bit of a knock. One would have thought that, well, it's having a bit of a relief rally. No, it's, uh, I think it's reacting to the news. Government is said to have asked PNB and its peers to determine the fraud liability. And that's what's really spoiled the party time and again for uh, PNB. So that stock, I remember it was at, what, 190 rupees just around uh, a month or so ago from there. It's taken a sharp correction. And keep in mind, the entire fraud value that everyone's been working with is 11,000, 11,500 crores. The market capitalization loss is more than 15,000 crores. So keep that in mind as well. The markets, no worries there. TCS is a stock that got a bit of a knee-jerk reaction. But as the analyst just told us at the start of the show, they're expecting not much impact uh, on that stock. And just take a look at that. That dip that we got, that's been bought. It's moved to the high point of the day. 